I built a forge out of this stuff and it cost me nothing. All my years of casually peering into rubbish skips as I cruise past them it does pay off from time to time. These here are a mixture of refractory kiln bricks which are brand new, never used, but just chucked out for some reason. They've, they've been leftovers from a job or something like that. And these ones at the front with Excalibur written on them are actually a building block but they're made from a material that has an immense fire rating and one of the great things about it is it's incredibly light. It, it feels like it's made out of the same material as the kiln bricks. Now I got it for free. They're the same dimensions as kiln bricks except bigger. So you know they're 200 mil long, 80 mil thick. They're a standard brick size, but they are this size. So I have built a kiln frame around what I had available here. And as soon as the paint's dry, I'm going to assemble this thing and give you a sneak peek. I went onto the website of the place that makes these Excalibur bricks and had a look at the technical specifications. It doesn't say what temperature they can withstand, but it does say that they have a seven hour fire rating. Now that'll be an architectural fire rating, not a pyromaniac's fire rating. So. This is an experiment, but the great thing about these things is that they are the same dimensions as normal fire bricks. So if they do crack or start to come apart, I can replace them with standard fire bricks. Um, it just chisels and knocks out. I'm using a centre punch and a bread knife to uh, dig this hole out because it's three inches deep. The whole saw only goes one inch deep. I've got to do it in three sections. It is getting a bit boring, isn't it? Let me see what I can do. I'm pedalling a lot faster now. How's that look? Is it faster? How's that? Once I've made the hole for the burner, I've got to put the burner tube in and weld in some supports so that it stays exactly where it's put. I've made burners like this before. One of the first projects I did on this channel was making a waste plastic py pyrolysis machine and that used a whacking big burner to heat the plastic and melt it without burning it. Um, the principle was pretty much the same except that one was using drip fed waste oil and um, the Venturi system was quite similar. I've taken care on this design as on that first design to make the critical parts fully adjustable. I can move the jet that the gas comes through in its relationship to the Venturi to alter the carburation and I can also restrict the amount of air coming into the whole thing so that once it's in I can do an initial setup with a screw and it will stay within a, a range of tune that I can adjust throughout the rest of its life. And the burner that's going to bring this thing to life is here. I've had to purchase three fittings to do the job. It cost me a total of about $15. I already had
the contact tip from a MIG welder, 0.9 of a millimeter, the elbow, and not many people know, but I've got 12 inch nipples. And I've got a few of these 12 inch nipples lying around, and they're quite rare. So when my high pressure, high capacity regulator arrives on the courier, I'll be able to screw that into here, assemble that into there, and that will provide me with a whacking great flame out of here. Now this is how light all this lot is. I can just reach around it, still holding the camera, pick the whole lot up and head inside with it. Honestly it weighs no more than about 10 kgs. So, yeah. So now they're all inside and these are going to now be assembled into this frame which I have made from the bottom of a gas bottle, a piece of scaffolding pipe. This is the lightweight angle framing that comes around a brand new motorcycle when you buy it in a box. And then some random little bits of strap that I had lying around. Everything here is recycled. Everything here is out of a rubbish bin. So here's one of these bricks, as you can see, very lightweight. That's going to be the base of the kiln. I've left a little bit on the, on the brick here, so I have a half. If I have long bits, they will support themselves in there better. I've got two pieces that are destined to become the side panels. I'm going to fit in there. Like that. And that. And then the lid goes on. But I haven't painted the frame for the lid yet, so I can't actually assemble the whole thing. You'll see here that I've put a hole through this one. It's very easy to do with a hole saw. You can cut this with a hand saw and a hole saw. You can carve it. It's great stuff. But what we're going to do is I'm going to assemble the burner on an angle. The burner will go down through a tube into here like so, and that will direct the flame towards the back of the kiln so it will swirl around. And it won't be the flame that's heating the steel, it will be the general temperature inside the kiln, which will give more even heating. The kiln's open at the back, so if I need to, I can drag it out into the middle of the room and put long pieces of bar right the way through. I've got an offcut here that if it's not being used for that, that will block up and provide me with faster heating. So this forge has cost me $15 for a couple of random pipe fittings that I had to buy. Um, and $50, New Zealand $50, so that's $25 US, for the high pressure, high capacity regulator for the gas. All the other incidentals were lying around the workshop. Even the blue paint. I didn't choose the colour, it's just half a can of blue paint that I had left over from something else, so it's getting used. In a couple of minutes we're going to fire this thing up and then I'll run through it component by component and show you exactly how it was made. I'll give a complete list of fittings that I used down in the description. The burner is housed in this tube that goes down through the brick 
and opens up to the inside. It's held in with these three set screws. These are 6mm by 25mm bolts. So you will need a 6mm tap to do that job. I actually used a 5mm tap to hold these light screws in because the 5mm screws have got less cross-sectional area than the 6mm bolts so it allows more air to get in. Peering down the hill, I've already shown you the jet assembly. I use a MIG welder contact tip and the great thing about a MIG welder contact tip is that they come in different sizes. Now in metric I've got a choice of 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1 millimeter and that gives me quite a change in power. The more gas that you've got coming through the Venturi here, the more air it pulls in. So the mixture stays fairly constant through the range. These things are pretty much self-carburating. So let's fire it up, throw some steel in and see how well it goes. Very easy to light, just Turn it on at the bottle, give it a little bit of pressure to start, and give it a spark inside. There we go. It's lit on low pressure. I'll crank it up now, and we'll see what we get. There we go. Let's find a bit of steel to put in there. A 16 mil. Put that in, give it a crank up. See how long it takes to heat up. Now, around the back of this forge, I've got a removable brick so that I can poke things all the way through if I've got long things that I need to heat the middle of. Still not up to temperature, so it looks like I've got a bit of work to do to adjust it and get it perfect. But the great thing about it is the depth of insertion is adjustable, the depth of insertion here is adjustable, that changes the mixture. see here from this fluttering that it's running too lean. There's a trick for that. Um, you drill a hole and thread it and put in a largish bolt, a bolt that's going to take up some of the volume inside the Venturi. It will form an obstruction and the obstruction will reduce the amount of air and richen the mixture of fraction. turn the forge down nice and quietly and a piece of steel should be able to sit in there for as long as I like. So I can bring two up to temperature, take one out, work on it, have the other one just sitting there at this temperature and then swap them over as the other one cools down, thereby saving a lot of gas. So I don't even have any tongs yet, I'm having to use an old pair of slip grips. But uh, now that I've got a forge, I can get forging. That's really horrible. Um, next video is going to be a tong making video. Hey, who? Apart from Land Rover owners, knows this about Land Rovers. It's a built-in funnel and fuel filter.
Don't you dare tell anybody my combination. But I think Land Rover might have had the world's first locking petrol cap. Built for farmers and adventurers. Thank <laughs> you.